I received the following question. He says, I'm going through a lot of struggles, but my greatest difficulty is the thoughts that distract me. It's like torment. What I understand is that there are thoughts that distract, take a focus away, evil thoughts. And he goes on saying, it is like torment, and my mind does not stop, I cannot stop having silly thoughts, nonsense. Is there anything I can do to stop with this once and for all? You must understand the following, especially you who are like this person who wrote to us, who is trying to live in peace, trying to do what is right, to keep a clean mind. You must understand the following about the mind. Our mind is a factory of thoughts. Our mind is working all the time. And what is the mind's work? It's to think. Its job is to imagine. It's to project ideas, to bring memories of what we can remember. Today I need to do this. Then the mind reminds us that we need to do something today. I need to think how I will solve this problem. I need to do this or that. So the mind is always working. You see that even when we sleep, the mind is working, producing dreams. Am I right? So the job of the mind is to think. But the mind will not always think about what is useful. And this is true for any human being. You, me, or anyone. I wish we could think only of what is helpful at all times. Imagine how productive our lives would be. But unfortunately, it's not what happens. Our mind grab all the information that is around, all our sensations. For example, when you feel cold, then your mind starts to tell you it's cold, you need to find a jacket, you need to think something. You think about happiness, then your mind makes you smile or leads you to call someone to share this joy, or you feel sad and you start to think why all this is happening to me or this or that. So the mind grasps all the information that is in it and the others that are coming 24-7 and works with this information and it starts to produce what it does, at times useful and other times useless. Let's try to make an analogy. Imagine that you have a factory where you have hundreds of employees, let's say a hundred employees, carpenters. You have a hundred employees who work with wood. Then you bring the wood, you buy the wood and bring it to the factory. And you tell your employees, you have to work with this wood. But you don't say what the employees should do, if they will build tables, wardrobes, if they will build shelves, you don't tell them what they should do, you only give them the wood and you tell them you need to work and they work, they won't be sleeping, they want to work. So what will they do? They will do whatever comes to their mind. Some will take the wood and build wooden toys, others will take the wood and make a chair, they will do whatever they want. Others will take the wood and hit the other's head. If there's no direction in this factory, if there's not a clear project, this is what you must do. He is the wood, you are capable of working with the wood, so I want you to create this. Here is the project. I want everybody working with this. If there's no order, a leader to command, these employees and carpenters, so this factory 
will only produce random things. Am I right? Likewise, is the human mind. Inevitably, you bring information. Since the womb of your mother, we are bringing information. For example, the wood comes to our mind. And the brain has its employees. If you don't give an order to your brain what you should think, what they should produce, what your mind should produce, so you will think random things. You will grab this information on top of the sinful nature that is in us, our fallen nature. Remember that within us there is good and bad. Thanks to Adam and Eve, we inherited this gene of good and evil. So our head at times will bring good jobs and at other times bad jobs. Good thoughts and bad thoughts. So you must make peace with this truth. Evil thoughts are inevitable because of the human nature. Soon, if they are inevitable and involuntary, it's different from someone who says, I want to think evil, how can I destroy that person? Then, you're given an order to your mind to destroy someone. This is different. If you're not given an order to your mind to think evil, and it is producing involuntarily evil thoughts, what you should do with these evil thoughts? The first thing you should do is not to take them into consideration, is to throw them away. In other words, you should say, I didn't order these thoughts, I don't know why you are presenting me with these evil thoughts, I want nothing to do with this, I throw them away, that's it, you reject them. The carpenters came to you and presented you a teeter torta, a seesaw. I don't want this, why did you do that? It's not what you need to do, throw this away, what I want you to do is this and that. You must give an order to your mind what you want to think. That's why the verse says, I want to think, I want to have in my mind what brings me hope. Everything that is good, useful, praiseworthy, everything that is productive, all that honors God, in this we should think. This is something intentional. You need to put effort, as like in any other job, for you to give an order to your mind to think about good things. But still, learn this. No human mind will always think about good things. So what to do with evil thoughts? Again, to despise them, ignore them, not to take them into consideration, don't give them wings, okay? So regain control of your mind. When you realize that there are many evil thoughts tormenting your mind, you need to regain control and focus of your mind and focus on something good and give the order to your mind to think what is good. You can stop in that moment, if you can stop and pray, if you can take your diary, your schedule, and think, what am I not doing today? What I need to focus on? So there is this and that, you need to have your notepad, your note app, for you always to look at what you must do, to remind you what you must do. Go and read something positive, the Word of God. Go and pray, as I said before. Pray to God, read a productive book, bring to your mind the good material and give the order that your mind may work on what is good. Raise intelligent questions to yourself. Look at a problem that is useful for your life and give it to your mind. Well, you have time, you have free time. I remember that my dad used to tell me that. Oh, you are playing. You don't have work to do? That's fine. My dad will take us to the garden, will give us the shovel, 
the gardening scissors, go among the loan. Soon we'll stop playing around. Quickly we'll stop playing around. Go and cut the grass or wash the car. That's what my dad used to do with me, with my brother. Always, when we were playing around because we didn't have anything to do, soon you'll find something to do. This is what you must do with your mind. Find something for it to do. On Psalm 94, there are two interesting verses about thoughts. Verse 11, on Psalm 94, it says, The Lord knows the thoughts of men, that they are futile. God knows. God knows that we tend to think about vain things. God knows that. He knows and He's not condemning us. He knows, He understands our structure. So you must understand that having an evil thought does not necessarily mean you have fallen into sin. What makes the person fall into sin is the person to give space to evil thoughts to feed them and act upon them. But when the evil thought comes, throw them to the side and find something more useful for your mind to do. And this is a daily exercise. Some of us will struggle more, others will struggle less. When you focus your mind on what is useful, when you exercise that, you will be well trained and others who are going through an attack, because at times there's an spiritual attack. You are attacked in your mind sometimes with evil thoughts, so you will have to resist more. But the attack will be over and you resist. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Evil thoughts attacked the Lord Jesus in the desert. He was attacked. He was fasting. He was finding refuge in the Word. And is what the other verse from Psalm 94 says. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. In other words, in the multitude of thoughts, the psalmist decided to focus on the comforts of God. In other words, in the words, in what God says. Like this, his soul found delight. Likewise, do the same to face evil thoughts. Is that okay? To despise them? To not make a big deal out of them? To take control over the factor of thoughts in your mind? to give direction of what you must do and to regain focus. And learn this, if you leave it free for a minute, an evil thought comes again and then you regain focus and you put it to work on what is useful. And be careful what you bring to your mind because evil information will give the employees in your brain bad material to produce evil thoughts. So filter filter in the source, don't bring evil material, information to your eyes and ears. This will minimize, will make it harder for your mind to produce what it shouldn't be producing. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.